Jimmy Teague here with Phoenix Home Inspections today. I wanted to give you a little tip. I always show you little tips, tricks, how to save you some money around the house. Uh, of course, a lot of us that uh, own homes uh, tend to have to take care of our yards, usually by buying lawnmowers. Let's just use a hypothetical situation. Say I happen to buy a brand new mower and the wife jumps on it and runs into your John Deere 345 and tears the hood off. How do you fix that? Uh, well, you can spend six to like $800 to replace the whole hood, or you go ahead, go ahead and try to fix it yourself. Uh, I'll be honest with you, I've never tried this before. Um, the method that I'm using today, I'm actually gonna try to plastic weld this. Um, now, I'm gonna tell you, the way this thing's tore up, the hinges on the front of them are actually completely broken off. <coughs> so, Super glue is not going to help. Duct tape is not going to help. Um, you could buy uh, two part. I think 3M makes it. It's a two part, part A, part B, plastic uh, repair on it. You could try to maybe trying to use a fiberglass repair. What I'm going to do is something a little bit different. I do have a little bit of JB Weld. I doubt I'll use it. I got a little bit of super glue that I might put a little bit just to hold the pieces in place. But what I'm actually doing is using a soldering iron. Actually, I don't have a soldering iron. I have a um, wood burning kit, which is the same thing. It's a piece of metal, it gets super hot. I'm gonna melt the plastic, weld it together, form it over. Um, this is my one kit, and I found my other kit that's got different types of tips. I'm gonna probably use a smooth one to try to, when I fold over the folds, just to smooth it out, see if that works, just to give it a prettier look. But before you begin, first thing you gotta do is clean this off. I've already got my soap bucket mixed up. I got some soap in it, some TSP, but since I'm using that, I gotta use some chemical gloves because it's, I believe this stuff's a little bit of corrosive, it'll eat your skin. But <coughs> you wanna wash it. If you don't have TSP, TSP can, um, not everybody has that. Uh, mineral spirits would work. I wouldn't use anything strong like um, lacquer thinners or paint thinners because that could probably eat the plastic. Um, I'd say it'd be strong enough to do that, but you know, there's a lot of other stuff out there. You could probably use Windex, but the main thing is, is when you wipe it down, you don't want to leave it film. So let me go ahead. I'm going to scrub this down and then I'll go to the next step and then show you a little bit of me working on it. Okay. So I'm going to give you a close up of what's going on. I've got a, a pretty good size crack here. You can see through the light. You might not be able to, but you can see that definitely. Um, it goes all the way up to here. Then I got a crack here. I notice there's one back here that you can't see that's on the bolt. I've got a little piece here. I may try to JB weld that or something. I'm, I'm gonna see if I can't weld it, plastic weld it. Um, but I cleaned everything um, to get all the grease off of it because it won't bond real well if you get grease. I'm wearing gloves. Well, one, I cut my finger and I don't want to get any my finger oils or blood in it. And uh, also in case I do touch something that's greasy, I don't get it in there in case I, uh, mess with the uh, super glue or anything like that. But I'm, like I said, I'm gonna try to plastic weld it. So I got my wood burning tool here. And the thing about wood burning tools is, is they got little brass tips. They're very fine thread. I've got another one that has a control dial. This is just all temperature. <coughs> but be careful unscrewing them, unscrewing them in. Of course, if you're using it, you gotta remember it's hot. So you got let it cool down because the threads and the metal can expand and if you take it off, which is what I do with the tool, I strip the threads. But I'm gonna see where that thread starts. Actually, one thing I wanna try to do, you gotta remember when you sit down your uh, soldering iron or your um, wood burner kit, the tip's hot so don't sit it on something that's gonna burn. I'm gonna put a little clamp here to hold it just in case if I push on it, I don't want the seam to split because I don't want to glue it that way. Technically I'm welding it, but I don't want to glue it that way. So I'm gonna go, that's the reason why I got this light. So it looks like it starts up to here. So they say if you put on this plastic, oh yeah, it just burnt, burns right in. Um, can we go down towards the middle of it? I can hear it bubbling. See, I'm going right down the seam of it. And while it's still hot, and then you just kind of flake the plastic back over, over it. And one of the 
cool things they talked about doing too is you could take a piece of uh, metal. Like I got some scrap uh, copper wire I made try. And you can lay it across the seam and just kind of melt it in and it actually will reinforce the, uh, the bond. Huh, that works pretty good. <laughs> like I said, I've never done this before. But like I said, take it down towards the middle of it. The reason why I'm not going all the way across to do the whole thing at one time is because I don't want the plastic to cool too fast. I still want to be able to manipulate it. See, the bright light's handy. I'm doing this in my garage here, which reminds me I need to replace my lights out with uh, LEDs because they're so much brighter. But I'm just letting it kind of slowly fall down in the crack. Then I'm using the flat side to kind of break it over. And once this is cool, I may try to change the tip on, I got a, a, what's called a transfer tip on my wood burning, which is really cool because you can print off a piece of paper on uh, ink, black ink. And if you run it on the back side of it with a piece of uh, wood, it actually transfers the image onto the wood. But since it's a round disc, it may be good to do that on this. You can see I'm already kind of coming apart here, so I'm going to use my finger to hold it in place. I don't know if you can hear it bubbling. But like I said, I'm just going to kind of move it back over. And you probably wouldn't have put super glue on the other side of it, but super glue is a little bit flammable, but the vapors will uh, go off. I figure I'll just end up getting it all over my fingers. But see, I'm going right in the middle of that crack. bringing it down and then rolling the plastic right back over it. Something I had thought about too is if you had a bunch missing, they sell a um, seen on Amazon stuff, uh, well, plastic welding sticks. Shoot, that fixed it. All right, I figured I'd better show you guys this little step I'm, or little trick I'm doing. Ah, uh, shoot. So I'm doing what's, if you're, been around welding at all, they call it tack welding. And instead of just trying to do the whole scene, what I'm gonna do is, this is like a puzzle, I gotta get this lined up without breaking it. Uh, I'm going to get this in place. I, I'll be honest with you, I am actually amazed at how well this is working. But what I'm gonna do is get this completely in place. I'm gonna clip it and do a little couple spots to hold it in place before I actually go all the way around it. So let me get this in place and then I'll show you as I do it. Okay, so I've got my clip in place. Um, try to zoom in on it. You can see I can actually mess with it a little bit to make that crack a little smaller. So I'm gonna hold it in place. And like I said, I'm just gonna kinda do like, like a little tack weld, if you will just uh this I mean it just buries down in it and I'm just gonna scrape it aside I also found out if you just go down this way too it kind of helps but see it held it it's getting close to my finger too so I had to let go um, but I'm just gonna kind of flick it back over so that's holding it in place. This place here is giving me trouble, so I'm going to do this. Then I'm going to try to squeeze this together to uh, close that gap in a little bit. So, like I said, I'm just going to take this. And I'm just, I'm not pushing down. I'm letting it fall right down. It's going about halfway down in the middle. And 
just kind of folding the plastic back over it and just kind of drape it down. Try and make it where it's almost flush, where you don't have a groove in. Okay, so this worked really well. I got this whole piece here on it. I'm going to uh, take the other piece, clean it up, put it on here. Um, but the weld looks pretty good on the inside of it. Uh, where I've actually got it all done. Um, I want to show you something before I get carried away and do this because I'm known for doing that. You can see I got a hairline crack here, so I went ahead and ran the burner across here. I'm going to go ahead and take care of this and across. And of course, it's going to be obvious. I mean, you can see where I've done it. But what I think I can do is if I just barely hit it, just enough to melt it together, I think I can take real fine uh, sandpaper and smooth this out. Now, I'll have it probably like a dull finish, but I could actually probably uh, touch it up with uh, some John Deere green paint and you won't ever notice it. But <laughs> with this being a hairline crack here, it's melted almost all the way to it, sealed. So, I mean, it's, I mean, it's on there. But uh, I think this, we, I'm looking at it as like a stress crack. If I take care of that, that'll probably keep it from uh, for, furthering damage from what I repair. But it, probably not, but it may be unnecessary. But, you know, I'm gonna try it. I wanna see what it looks like. So, I'll, hopefully I'll get that shown to you. Okay, so I went ahead and took the tip just really smooth right across here. I guess you can call it brazing or whatever. And then I found me some 300 and it's actually working pretty good just to knock the chunks off of it. Um, the bigger the number on the sandpaper, the smoother it is. Uh, I would start with maybe 300, 400. Um, if you get it looking really good, I guess you could always go down to 1200. That's like what you use uh, in a body shop for after you've done a clear coat. You see, I kind of knocked the weld off so I can probably hit that again. Um, but honestly, it don't look too bad. Now, of course, if you don't want this groove here, I wouldn't braise it like I did. But, you know, because otherwise you'll have something that looks like that. Um, real small, but I wanted, to, it's a mower. I'm gonna be bouncing up and down. It's gonna vibrate. I want it to work. So I've got everything done. Uh, who would have known plastic welding was so simple and it actually worked. Um, now where I braze this, I probably should have left that alone because you can't even see this crack here. I didn't even braze this. Um, I should have probably left it alone, but you know, honestly, I could probably work on it some more, sand it down, get to where you can't even tell, uh, tape up the stickers, paint it. Probably look just like brand new, but you know, it looks like all the other scuff marks from hitting the tree limbs and stuff. But like I said, this thing was completely tore off, uh, completely re-welded this. Uh, went ahead and hooked everything up. I mean, my welds all look really nice. So now I'm just gonna put it on the lawnmower and uh, be ready to start using it. So there you have it. Hopefully that's a uh, cool trick for you guys, plastic welding. I did not use JB Weld, super glue, duct tape, nothing. It is just strictly using my wood burner. Um, Typically they say you use your soldering iron, but uh, soldering irons typically are the same thing, really. Um, but it was pretty simple. Uh, but if there's any other videos out there you'd like to see or anything that I can help you with, also if you're looking at buying a house, give me a holler. Uh, also, uh, if you're thinking about selling a house, I can do what's called a pre-listing. Helps you out. Uh, you'll be able to sell your house, fix all the issues before the next home inspector sees it to draw out your uh, selling process. But uh, look me up, phoenixhomeinspectionsllc.com. And thank you for watching. Until next time, catch you later.